welcome everyone. Thank you so much for being here, especially our four panelists. Um, we are so excited to have you here on our, for our second panel on green experts, just to learn about green jobs in New Brunswick and what that looks like. Um, so I'll do a little introduction. My name is Mia and I'm one of the student interns at the Gaia Project this summer. <clears throat> Sorry, I have a little bit of a cough. Um, yeah, so I'm one of the student interns at the Gaia Project this summer. I'm going into my fourth year at Mount Allison University this fall, and I'm really excited to be here and to hear you talk about your job and what you do. So a little bit on the Gaia Project. The Gaia Project is a, a provincial nonprofit, um, and our mission is to empower youth and teachers to take action on climate change. So we offer free, fun, hands-on programming for students from K to 12 um, all across the province um, on topics such as energy literacy, climate action, student leadership, and so much more. Um, and today we have a few of our staff members joining us. Um, and so first we have Anna Lee, who will be helping me with today's panel. She'll be monitoring the chat. So any questions you might have, if you need any extra information, um, she'll be there to help. We also have Gab and I think I saw Leah earlier who will be joining us um, to listen to our panelists. Um, so before we start, I'd like to acknowledge that the land that we work on today is the unsurrendered and unceded land of the past, present, and future Wabanaki people. We are all treaty people in New Brunswick, and we hope to become better allies to Indigenous communities all across Canada through our work. So we'll get started um, with our panels today. We'll be talking about um, green jobs in New Brunswick with our four panelists today. So the topic will be like the questions will be like, what kind, what are green jobs? What does that look like for you and how you got to your current positions? and much more. Um, and to introduce our panelists to our participants, we have students here today participating um, and they're all they're from all over the province, um, going from grade six to grade 12. So I just wanna say a quick thank you to all the students for being here with us and joining us, especially during your summer vacation. Um, and I'll just remind everyone once more that we'll, if you wouldn't mind just keeping your mics muted during the session until the very end. Um, and I encourage you all to share any questions you might have in the chat um, and we'll take a look during our questioning period. So I think that was my little intro blurb and we'll get started with our panelists. Um, so I'd like to welcome today our four panelists and I will we'll introduce you all very quickly and I'll let you share more about your job and what you do. So today we have Adrian Prado, who's coming with us um, from the Northwest Regional Service Commission. Um, we have Jane Birch Hill, who's coming to us from Port St. John. Sean McGrath, um, coming with us from Act 4. And Spencer Carabellis Pittman from McCain Foods Limited. So we'll just jump right into our questioning period, our panels. If you all just want to go around and just explain your job to like a typical high school student, like what are your main responsibility, like what do you do? And we can start with um, Adrian and we'll go to Jane, Sean, and then Spencer. Perfect. Well, it's great to be here. Um, so maybe I'll start by introducing the, the commission and what we do uh, in general, and then I'll go into my, my role. I'll try to do it pretty quickly. Um, and it's always confusing trying to explain this because we're not very well known, but uh, essentially in New Brunswick, there are 12 of these regional service commissions. We offer uh, different services to municipalities within our jurisdiction and uh, to local service districts. All of that is changing now with the municipal reform, so it's going to be different next year, but uh, currently we have uh, 13 different unincorporated areas within our jurisdiction, 10 municipalities, and we collaborate with one First Nation. And so the services that we offer are planning services, waste collection. Those are the base services, but we also extend into uh, emergency measures planning and uh, 
Uh, I work on climate change adaptation and uh, sustainable development. So my work at the commission, uh, it's kind of all sorts of things. Uh, I evaluate uh, um, environmental impact assessments. I do some mapping. I do some programming and developing tools. Uh, but I also do a lot of networking and working with different uh, NGOs, so uh, environmental non-government uh, organizations, researchers, and uh, trying to integrate knowledge about uh, sustainable development, whether it's um, regarding water quality or uh, species conservation, uh, connectivity, climate change adaptation, uh, all sorts of things into our, our plans that we're developing with communities for uh, their development to guide their, their, their growth. So in a nutshell, that's about it, but uh, I'm happy to develop further on. I think I'm on, I'm up next. <laughs> yes. Awesome. So I work at Port St. John. Uh, just a little bit about Port St. John. If you're not, you know, in the St. John area, you might not be familiar with us. So we are like our big areas of business are cargo. So that means it could be container cargo or uh, liquid cargo, break ball cargo coming in and out of Port St. John as exports and imports. But we're also a very busy cruise port. So we have lots of cruise ships that visit us each year. And we act on behalf of the government of Canada kind of as like a landlord of federal lands to companies who will bring marine traffic to St. John. So any company that we work with, they have to have the ability to attract marine traffic, which it could be cruise ships or it could be um, cargo ships. And I'm the uh, sustainability and communication specialist. So my job is kind of a mix of coming up with ways to incorporate sustainability into our business practices and partnerships, but also making sure the story of those efforts is shared in an interactive way with our community and stakeholders. So some of my main responsibilities as it relates to sustainability would be um, I'm the project manager of our decarbonization strategy. So um, that entails working with our operations folks on all the various ways we can make green choices, um, which could relate to the vehicles we purchase, um, our buildings, our operations. I also develop our sustainability report um, and we're currently facilitating a greenhouse gas inventory. Um, and this position and focus is kind of new for Port St. John. So a lot of it right now is getting our plans ironed out and then the next step is going to be implementing them. That's great. Thank you, Jane. And Sean? Hey, everyone. Uh, thanks for having me. Uh, I work for ACT4. We have kind of two branches which are significant for today's uh, panel. It, we have a forest management branch, uh, specifically a restorative forest management branch. So we generally help uh, uh, municipalities, watersheds, uh, private landowners um, who want to see uh, some sort of management happen on their on their forest uh, or conservation groups. So if they want restoration to occur on their forest, uh, we generally engage to learn more about their interests and more about their forest and how we might uh, be able to uh, prescribe treatments to restore some of the ecological function of that forest. And Oh, I think I think we just lost Sean. Um, here he is. <laughs> <At this point>. Hi. <laughs> uh, generally, we're trying to help help these uh, landowners or, or stakeholders in in the land bases uh, plan for uh, at least uh, a few decades, if not uh, over a hundred years into the future. Um, and generally, we're we're looking at how climate climate change is is uh, changing um, our forest's ability to thrive, and we're trying to help the forest shift to match that um, and and be more climate resilient. And our the second branch uh, of which I'm switching over to focus on more in my current role is Act for Energy. So we're using uh, waste from the the restorative forest management treatments. To provide energy to local municipalities, uh, private owners, generally large heat consumers um, uh, from the waste uh, wood fiber from from the restoration treatment. So we're, our goal is to draw down more carbon with with sequestration in forests and uh, reduce emissions by replacing fossil fuels. That's that's uh, us in a nutshell. And generally, we're 
Uh, I'm technically trained as a forest technician uh, and, and project manager. Um, and a, a lot of our staff are, are either engineers or forest technicians. That's really great. Thank you. Um, Spencer, do you want to tell us a little bit about your job? Sure. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me all right? Excellent. Excellent. Um, so I work for McCain Foods, which is the, the world's largest French fry manufacturer. Um, we produce one in every four French fries on the planet uh, on on every continent except Antarctica. Um, I work specifically in our North American Agriculture Division, uh, leading everything climate mitigation, climate adaptation and, and resilience with our within our business and our growers. Currently, we're focused on um, reducing greenhouse gas emissions, uh, building strategies for uh, adopting regenerative agriculture practices, uh, and trying to invest in and build uh, you know, education uh, systems and support for climate adaptation and resilience with growers. Um, New Brunswick is uh, our most diverse region. We actually manufacture French fries, deep and delicious cakes, pizza pockets, uh, and and everything, almost everything we do has some connection to New Brunswick. Uh, it's the heart of our business. It's it's where it all started, uh, and it's definitely a, a place that's very near and dear to my heart. Uh, having just moved here only a few years ago, uh, but really loving my time here and uh, really enjoying everything that New Brunswick has to offer. That's really great. Thank you. Um, and it's so exciting to have just so many, just like all of you being from very different parts of like green jobs. It's very exciting. <laughs> um, so for our next question is, so what, like when you were in high school, what kind of job or career were you planning or like what, what did you want to do when you were in high school? Um, and we'll start with Sean and then we'll go to Adrian, Jane and then Spencer. Uh, I guess the truth of the matter for me was I really didn't know. I, I knew that I I was drawn to be outdoors uh, and do something kind of adventurous. Uh, and so I, I ended up taking a program straight out of high school in, in uh, human resources, which uh, although it can supplement some of my my uh, focus now, it, it really I've never really gone into that field. I just kind of took it because it seemed like a reasonable thing to do at the time. But I quickly uh, moved into working outdoors in forestry. So as a tree planter originally in, in uh, British Columbia uh, and, and then coaching skiing as well. So it took me uh, a few years of just going out and trying some different jobs before I kind of landed on what interests me. And then I ended up going back to school uh, to be technically trained in forestry. Thank you. Adrian? Yeah, so I'm I'm kind of in a similar boat. Um, I In high school, and I grew up in Quebec, so it's a slightly different system, but uh, we have high school and then CJEP after, which is kind of like a college uh, thing, and then we have university afterwards. But uh, I remember not really knowing what I wanted to go into. I, I've always enjoyed the environment, but I've enjoyed technology. I've enjoyed creating things. And when we had a guidance counselor come come by, uh, I, I fell into that very small proportion of people that kind of, they just said, you can do whatever you'd like. And so <laughs> that, that really didn't help me. And uh, I ended up uh, going to university in uh, electrical engineering. Um, Kind of just because I I could and and hoping that uh, I could eventually work in some sort of robotics field, but I realized I didn't really enjoy the theoretical side of engineering, so uh, I ended up going into biology. Ended up working in IT because finding a job in biology at the time was a little bit difficult. And uh, then uh, I went back to school in environmental sciences and pursued a master's in environmental microbiology, and. Kind of just stumbled into my current job uh, by chance <laughs> and I really enjoy it. So, uh, uh, you know, it just goes to show that you can really try all kinds of different things and, and see what fits and, and all experiences are useful. So. For sure, yeah. I've heard from a lot. It's pretty common to just like to take very, to go on one path and end up on a different, for sure. 
Um, what about you, Jane? Yeah, so when I was in high school, I knew I wanted to work in the environmental sector. Um, and it was 2011 when I graduated high school and the green economy in New Brunswick um, was nowhere near what it is today. There wasn't many, um, you know, possible career paths that I was aware of. And I remember even in like 2015 when I would talk about electric ca cars, people thought I was crazy. So the mindset here in New Brunswick back then wasn't really open to, you know, that type of career path. And since there was kind of little to no green career paths in New Brunswick in those days, I couldn't really picture what type of job I would have. I thought maybe something outside because I always enjoyed the outside and that was really all I knew was possible. Um, and I just knew I wanted to be something where I, I was taking action against, cli against climate change. Um, and this is one of the reasons I'm passionate about this program because it's important for young people to see examples of tangible career paths in the green economy in New Brunswick. So I'm happy to be here today uh, and share with you guys. For sure, it's so great to have our panelists here sharing all about their experience, and I'm sure it's really great for the students too to hear about all the different pathways of how you got to your current positions. Um, thank you for sharing in the chat, Spencer, about your report. Do you want to tell us a little bit about what you thought your pathway was going to be in high school, or what you wanted yes, to do when you were? Wanted... Yes, absolutely. Um, I think I share a similar uh, background to a lot of our folks here were in when I was in high school. I, I also didn't know what I wanted to do. Uh, I knew I wanted to do something environmentally related. Um, I had always had a passion for camping and, and survivalism, so I kind of wanted to do something that was more outdoors related. Uh, I took a degree from the University of Toronto in environmental science, which you know seemed like a really good fit and really helped me find my passion. But I was worried that I wouldn't have as much of an impact and, and I didn't see as many career choices around. So I wound up taking a, a degree in business for sustainability management. Um, and that really kind of brought together what I would call like the fusion of where we're at currently with business, uh, identifying what we need to do to bring environment, bring climate resilience and bring other things forward into a system uh, and really harmonize our environment and, and business together. Um, so in that way, you know, I just was lucky in a way to have found my calling and, and found something that I was really passionate through that. If you were to look back and tell the high school me that I'd be working uh, in sustainability in farming, I would tell you no way. Uh, you know, there's no way I, I considered myself working with farming or even actively running, you know, trial plots and, and other things that we do within our agriculture field here. But, uh, you know, the beautiful thing about degrees these days and, and pathways is that um, sustainability, I think, is expressed in a lot of different ways. You don't have to be a sustainability manager necessarily to become connected to sustainability. If anything, I work a lot of my job um, working with folks who are agronomists or, or field managers or, you know, plant managers or others to understand how can we bring sustainability into your day to day job? How do you, you know, you noticing things about how things run and thinking about efficiency and thinking about our planet? How can we, you know, take that from an idea into a real working action and really prove that, you know, not only are we doing something good for the planet, but we're also saving ourselves money with efficiency. We're also building for a future that is more and more uncertain every day uh, and trying to look forward and say, you know, what does the future look like not just five years from now, but 10, 15, 20, 30 years from now? And how can we make the investments today to ensure that we're continually able to, to live fruitful and, and purposeful lives now and forever? So I think really, um, you know, the my my understanding of, of from what I've learned in sustainability is that uh, you can make a job about sustainability if you have the right passion. For sure. Thank you. It's just it's so important. I think one of our focus here is just very much showcasing not just green jobs necessarily, but how all jobs can become green jobs and how you can always incorporate sustainability into all different kinds of jobs. Um, so our next question, we kind of touched on really quickly, um, but if we could just talk a little bit about your career path. So your schooling jobs, like how did you get to your current position? Um, and we'll start with you, Spencer, and then we'll go to Jane, Sean and Adrian. Yeah, as I, as I yeah. 
I keep pushing the wrong unmute button. My computer always echoes. My phone that I'm going off of doesn't. So apologies, everyone. Um, yeah, as I said um, before, yeah, I picked environmental science, um, really connected with the science of it, really wanted to understand the fundamentals behind our planet, wanted to understand climate change, and, and really wanted to know what I could do about it. Um, and I felt that that's something that was really important uh, and remains really important. Um, but it, it, I felt leaving that degree that um, I didn't have enough action in what I could do. I could really quantify the problem. I could tell you what's going wrong with our biogeochemical cycling, what's changing within the climate, you know, what what is leading a lot of the challenges. But I felt like I needed more in terms of what to do about it and how do we create solutions? How do we get people motivated? How do we you know, bring the right message and, and you know, how do we even utilize existing systems, even if they're somewhat broken? And I would say our current, you know, capitalist system is somewhat broken towards the environment. But how do you use the terms that are familiar to people to make the change that you need to happen on the ground? And so that's why I sought out the program that I did, which was more of a fusion of business and, and environment together, trying to understand, you know, how how does one motivate people to make change? How can the process of change itself be sustainable in a way that you know doesn't burn people out and and make people think negatively about sustainability and other things? And how can we balance the uh, the uh, business, the politics, and the you know beliefs around sustainability, which are way across the board and and more polarized than ever, uh, and really drive people towards understanding you know what that this is an imperative, that we are, you know, at the edge of a cliff and that we are, you know, in need of some drastic change if we want to move forward. Um, so, you know, moving forward in that way, I think that's really what my goals were, just trying to understand that sustainability is not something that people look at as its own silo anymore. It's not something that, you know, you're going to sit in one office and do the sustainability thing and you're going to be the one person and that you're going to run the whole show. It really is about bringing everyone along and having a rising tide that lifts all ships. For sure, definitely. Very important. Um, Jane, do you want to tell us a little bit about your background and pathway? Yeah, so like I said in high school, I wanted to do something envir in the environmental sector. So um, I did a Bachelor of Science in Environmental Science from St. Mary's University. And along the way in high school and university, I volunteered a lot and worked in as many environmental groups as I could. Um, and my favorite was working in the mountains and coastlines of Nova Scotia doing plant inventories with an ecology lab. So kind of my vision of, you know, what someone who works in environmental science does came to fruition at that point. And um, after university, I moved home to New Brunswick and was looking for jobs for probably a year. And I was really considering um, moving out west. There seemed to be more opportunities out there, even in the environmental sector. Um, so I kind of had different jobs between during that time. Um, and then I found a position actually with the Gaia project and I started working with them, um, delivering programs like this and eventually running uh, their communications projects as well. And I was there for about four years and got a lot of good experience. I find nonprofits are a great place to work um, if you really want to be multifaceted because you really get to get your hands in many different projects and many different disciplines. Um, and then from there, I was ready for a change. I applied for a communications job with Port St. John because I knew they were a great organization to work for. And I really saw the potential um, in the fact that they needed to expand their sustainability and environmental um, work because many other ports in Canada, like in larger cities, um, are really leaders in that in that way. And I knew there was work to do there. Um, and I really believe, kind of like Spencer said, you can bring sustainability into any job and kind of make your career whatever you aspire to be if you have a good employer and a good manager. And my manager, Paula, she really uh, saw the potential in me to do more sustainable sustainability work. And I was also really vocal about that being my goal when I got hired. Um, so they created this position for me. Um, and now I've since then done a few different certificates, um, like in project management um, and in sustainability reporting. So I think it's so true that if you can find a good employer and a good manager and kind of be you know confident in, in expressing your career goals from the beginning, then then you can probably make anything possible. And sustainability is so far reaching and very collaborative. So I get to work with kind of all the different departments, like our business development department, who is 
you know, out traveling around the world selling Port St. John to cargo owners. Um, also our operations department who's in charge of our facilities. So it's really multifaceted. That's really great to hear for sure. Um, Sean, do you want to tell us a little bit about your background? Um, yeah, my my I think my career path is was anything but direct uh, to get to where I am now uh, and was as much about learning what I didn't like as what I did like uh, and navigating uh, towards the things that I really, really enjoyed. And so uh, from high school, I did a human resources program, uh, worked in a couple of jobs that that I was applying that and, and wasn't really fond of that. So I decided to just go uh, coach skiing in, in uh, Whistler Blackcomb in British Columbia. Um, and from there, I started planting trees as well uh, for in, in northern British Columbia uh, because I had to do something in the summertime. Um, and that was a common thing for young people to do. Uh, and then I, I started take being offered some opportunities to um, uh, work my way up through the company. Uh, and then after a few years, I was uh, being sent on training to become a project manager for that company uh, and, and managed aspects of the company's uh, fleet and our large restoration projects. So that was at the time we were the, the third largest uh, uh, tree planting company in, in Canada. Um, and so we were doing upwards of uh, 40 million seedlings a year um, we were planting. Um, I know I knew I enjoyed the the forestry aspect and being outside, but I was a little uh, getting a little tired of spending all my time in clear cuts. Uh, the, the, sometimes people associate tr planting trees with like a green uh, that that they're always green, but sometimes we we don't have to clear cut the trees to begin with. Um, and so i wanted to explore that more so I, I actually went back to school to to learn more about forestry i became a i i was trained as a forest technician um and, and by that time i most of my career background was in management and so i moved into managing i moved back to new brunswick and started managing uh what they call in new brunswick a, a forest products marketing board um so i i represented about 7500 woodlot owners across three about 360,000 hectares of forest um, and help them find market, help them do civil culture. And uh, it, I, I often found that um, there was an unwillingness to, to do what everyone acknowledged is the right thing or good sustainable management and uh, because the economics weren't quite as good um, and the economic system didn't quite drive people to, to good sustainable management. And so um, I knew that, that that was one of the instances of like, I know I didn't want to continue down that road. I wanted to try and see if I couldn't make some change and found Act 4, which has been uh, restoring the Acadian forest for about 14 years. Um, and everything that everybody else told me couldn't be done, Act 4 had been doing for well over a decade. And so just learn so much with them and um yeah really really uh probably the most in my entire career um super motivated to to drive uh things forward here with continuing to do a better job at sustainable management and reducing uh greenhouse gas emissions uh yeah so it's sometimes uh sometimes the things that i i didn't really enjoy or weren't weren't suitable for me were really helpful in steering me in the right direction. So if ever you find yourself in that position, uh, know that that in itself is likely valuable in your career path. That's really great to hear that you were able to find out for and do the work that you were really, really passionate about and were searching for. Um, Adrian, do you want to touch on a little bit about your pathway and how you got to your current position now? Sure. So I, I kind of went into it earlier, so I'll try not to to repeat myself too much. But uh, um, I did my my undergrad in or started an undergrad in, in uh, electrical engineering. Didn't really fit. Uh, so then I moved into uh, biology and focused on behavioral ecology. 
uh, which essentially meant that during my summers I was studying chipmunks out in the woods and uh, it was uh, a very interesting experience, but I realized that maybe that sort of work wasn't really what I was super interested in. Uh, when I graduated, I ended up working in IT, as I mentioned, uh, felt that I really wanted to kind of make a difference in the world. So went back into uh, environmental uh, sciences, uh, did a second undergrad there in uh, uh, renewable resource management. Oh, I think I'm hearing an echo. Um, and so uh, then I actually got an opportunity from a, a professor who was uh, looking for a, a master's student and uh, started studying canola and uh, the impacts of fertilizer on uh, the microbial population. So did a lot of biotechnology work and bioinformatics work. And so I was able to recycle some of the things I had learned from electrical engineering, like programming and uh, develop some, some programs uh, to do those kinds of analyses and realized again that, you know, that sort of research wasn't really for me. Uh, I took some time off, uh, went traveling and uh, walked across Quebec and ended up in New Brunswick, uh, where, uh, or just before that, I was working with some fab labs and uh, some some NGOs uh, on on um, kind of de democrat democrat democratization of uh, science and technology. And uh, so, yeah, when I ended up in New Brunswick, there was a job posting for uh, someone to develop a climate change adaptation plan uh, at the RSC, and uh, I ended up working on that. They asked me how long I thought it would take. I told them you could get probably a very simple one in a few months, but you could get something good if you really put some time into it. And I think they really appreciated that approach, uh, saw that I was really networking with organizations that they hadn't been in the past, researchers and all sorts of things. And so, like everyone's been saying, kind of created my own job there uh, and I've been there ever since so for five years uh, and developing the sustainable development side of things and we just recently hired a second person who is now working on exclusively communications related to uh, sustainable development so uh, I think you know you can go into any field and and model uh, your 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 end goal uh, into a job for sure. Uh, and so we, we, we've we been kind of filling these gaps as we move along and learning about what the needs are in sustainable development. Yeah, that's fantastic to hear that you guys are able to expand now. Like that's really, really great. Um, and so we'll just jump straight into our next question. So which is just what do you love about your job? What do you enjoy doing? Just like making a difference? What What's your favorite part about your job? Um, and we'll start with uh, Jane, and then we'll go to Spencer, Adrian, and then Sean. Sounds good. Um, so there's many things I love about my job. I love how dynamic the work is here. So we're a point of trade and tourism, like I mentioned, for the entire world. So it really feels like the opportunities are endless. I also like the feeling of creating my own work plan and projects, and I do also get to work with a lot of local um, NGOs, environmental NGOs um, on conserva conservation projects, um, both kind of like in the ocean sphere and then also along the coastline. Um, it's also a challenging job. I'm always doing uh, new things for the first time, um, which I think is where the best growth comes from. And I can also see my career having the ability to grow here as Port St. John grows. We're really on like an upward traje trajectory right now. Um, we're like the fastest, second fastest growing container port on the east coast of North America. So I can see um, down the line us hiring more people. That would be great <laughs> to work on this file. And also one of my favorite days um, is when wind turbines get shipped through our port. So um, we hand a, handle a bunch of different types of cargo and um, a lot of wind turbines have been coming through lately, so that's one of my favorite days. That's so great to hear. Um, what about you, Spencer? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, absolutely. I think the the sustainability sector, if I were to really put a peg on it, I would say it's probably the fastest growing sector within agriculture and food and, and possibly a lot of industries as well. Um, I'm always looking for for new folks to augment and, and partner on sustainability, sustainability, regenerative and, and climate adaptation. I think uh, 
true success comes from a lot of partnerships um, and comes from a, a you know a global understanding at a applied at a local level. So, you know what that really means is trying to keep our mind and and heart in the right place, but also acting in a way that you know we can take our diverse geographies and make them work in one place. Um, you know, I, I see a lot of need for sustainability professionals in the food and agriculture space in general. Um, I think agriculture is kind of the canary in the coal mine when it comes to climate change in a lot of ways. Um, the weather is already impacting our growers in se severe and significant ways. Uh, it's leading to crop failures and challenges across Canada. Uh, and the understanding and the, you know, where knowing what to do about it uh, is, you know, far behind what we need to really provide the right action, you know, at the right level. So we're constantly trying to to train, educate uh, and provide pathways for folks within our business and for partners, you know, within our business and, and uh, externally to come in and help support us and, and our growers on this. Uh, you know, it, it is a, a hard challenge, you know, I think with the economic struggles that we've been ha having and, and the you know future, which is going to be more economically uncertain even than now, um, it's hard to make our existing systems work in a way that support the environment, but it's less hard every day. And what seemed impossible even five years ago is what we are already relying on today. So I, I love Jane's example of talking about, you know, electric cars five years ago, it seemed silly, but now it, it seems like owning a gas car in the next 10 years is, is a silly idea in a way. Um, so I, I really, you know, believe that there is a lot of space for sustainability within our industry. There's a lot of space for, you know, taking on sustainability, taking on, you know, what you would consider like a regular job and, and fusing them together in a new way. Uh, and I really hope that the the passion and and the desire of everyone in our younger generations who, you know, bring sustainability in more as a core concept and really have a firm belief in it, uh, will help us drive the change that we need to really be, uh, you know, successful and, and and fruitful into the future. Definitely, it, like it's a good point. It's because it's sustainability is just growing so fast that like it's. It's going to become much, much easier to incorporate it into a lot of different jobs that normally you wouldn't think to. Thank you, Spencer. Um, Adrian, do you want to take a go? Sure. So I, I hear a lot of things that Spencer said that really resonate with me. And I think, uh, you know, collaborating and working with the uh, other other experts is really uh, essential to moving moving the needle, and that's something that I really really enjoy. Um, you know, just thinking about agriculture, we work with uh, different research organizations. I know that uh, Climate Atlantic has uh, a lot of expertise as well with uh, with uh, agriculture, and uh, we have potatoes in our region, for for example. So that's a, a consideration that we have in our in our plans. Uh, same thing with work that Sean's doing. So we work with the forestry sector as well, uh, looking at uh, opportunities for natural asset uh, planning and integrating these these kind of newer ideas that really we didn't have uh, in in New Brunswick. Uh, previously. So um, I think the fact that there's always these new challenges, new ideas coming into play, you really don't get bored. Uh, we have a solid waste facility. They're, you know, uh, improving their their systems all the time, and I've helped them with their their applications uh, for funding. So, uh, you know, trying to capture green, uh, greenhouse gases and, and uh, uh, waste emissions and turn that into energy. So these are all interesting things that uh, just by collaborating with and networking, you really get to learn about, um, I guess I'll just say it again, new things that you get to implement. So that's really the, the thing that really attracts me to this job. Yeah, that's really, that's fantastic to hear. Um, Sean, so do you want to tell us what do you love about your job? Uh, it's, it, it seems like it's in the same vein of, as all the other panelists today. Um, the, uh, the owner and founder of, of Act4 started the business uh, 14 years ago with a similar uh, mindset and, and model. And he's always talked about that probably being about 10 years ahead of it, its time. Um, and so I think he's been met with a lot of resistance um, along the way and he said it's only been in the last few years that he seems to be like coming over a hump where like 
Now, the effort required to push forward and the other experts that are around or the other organizations that are looking to collaborate and uh, make these things happen is growing. And so I think I've I've been with ACTOR for three years. And so I might not have like had to experience the slog of the uphill battle, but we're seeing a lot of momentum pick up and a lot of opportunities. And, and the opportunities are just so vast because of that. Um, I think similar to what everyone else has said is like the, the, the things that we thought as silly or impossible five years ago now for so many reasons are becoming realities. And so it just seems like always new and exciting things, uh, accomplishments we're okay. pulling out. So a, a high level of fulfillment um, in the job and, and actually making a difference in advancing the sector that way is I think what I really love. And I think second to that is we're finding lots of young people graduating uh, that we can bring on board of our teams because we're, we're growing as well. Um, and they're all coming out with new information that I didn't get when I was in school um, and they're accelerating this process even more. So that's really fun to, to participate in, in learning what they have to offer while sharing what we've learned. Um, that's likely one of my favorite parts. It's so great to hear that there are just so many young people wanting to go into the industry like I myself am graduating from Mane next year and I intend on going into the green sector so it's just really exciting to hear that there are just so many people on board and it's just it's growing and that's really great. Um, so we're getting kind of close to the end of our panel today and I'm just wondering if any of our students have any questions for the panelists anything that they'd like to ask feel free to turn on your mic turn on your camera but also to just drop it in the chat uh yes Jean. what would you say would be the best job to uh to apply for at the age of 14. Would anyone? Yes, go ahead, Jay. Um, I think maybe working maybe part time with like a non for profit organization. Um, and I believe the New Brunswick um, Environmental Network has like a whole list on their website of, of different. Uh, nonprofits in New Brunswick that are related to environment. And I think also to just volunteering is a great option as well. If you can't find some paid work, um, but you're still interested in gain, gaining experience, I think um, reaching out uh, to different organizations about volunteering is a good idea too. Or getting involved sure. at your school. Or There's probably an envir environmental uh, club or society. Yeah, I totally agree with what Jane said, I think. And uh, I also think, you know, this is going to be an interesting take, but if you can get into something that requires, you know, a lot of interpersonal connection, like even something in sales or something in, in volunteering where you have to go out and, and meet with people a lot. I know, you, you know, 14 may be a little young for that, but at the same time, a lot of dealing with sustainability is finding common ground with people who may or may not believe in sustainability or may you know want something different than than what sustainability offers but you can use sustainability to get there so i think a lot of the you know some of the best skills that i use a lot every day are really just knowing how to find common ground with people and then connect with them so something that puts you in in a little bit of conflict that's manageable but gets you to understand people and how to work with them i think is the best way to, to go in my opinion Yeah, networking is such an such an important skill to have, and it's definitely very, very valuable. Um, Adrian and Sean, do you have anything to add? Um, I, like I, I think uh, it's been just a, such a long time since I was 14 and looking for employment. Uh, so it's a good question, Jean. I think I was in your shoes, uh, eager to find something uh, to just get out there and start learning about employment and what that's like and earn a bit of spending money. Uh, I 
I ended up uh, mowing lawns when I was younger and that sort of thing, like anything that I could get my hands on. Um, and they all had, when I reflect on that, they all have uh, had some sort of merit in uh, the development of, of who I am today and what I do. And so there may not be the perfect job out there that's, uh, for whatever reason, pays a lot or uh, is is super green. Um, but even just learning some of the skills uh, related to having a job and working with people in that environment um, are, are a really critical stepping stone in, in your career path. So um, I wouldn't be afraid to take any sort of opportunity that, that you can find in your region that works for you and your family. For sure. That's a great question. Oh, yes, Aiden. No, sorry. I don't have too much to add other than saying that, you know, the, the environmental uh, workforce is, is kind of a small community right now. Um, so definitely, you know, doing some volunteering with ENGOs, uh, looking into job postings on the NBEN website will we'll definitely get you connected with, with people that are working in the field. And uh, it's a great way to get started. I think that that's probably the the, the first step to take. Um, volunteering is is also fantastic, and and uh, like everyone said, you know, any experience is good at this point for sure. Definitely. Um, if any other students have any questions, feel free to raise your hand, unmute yourself, or just pop it into the chat. Um, but maybe I can ask uh, like a few questions um, just if no one else has any questions. Um, so I think the next question would be, what are some advice um, for students who are interested in going into green careers, into pursuing green jobs? Um, we'll start with Adrian, um, then Sean, Spencer and Jane. Um, I think maybe point of advice in general is don't be afraid to to make a mistake, you know, and and think like, oh, uh, this is maybe not the field for me, and try something else. It's you're you're not kind of like tied into whatever you decide, right? Um, there's always the possibility to change your field. Uh, <clears throat> even if you're studying, you can always transfer to a different faculty or a different department. Um, so you know, it it shouldn't be too too much of a stressor, I think, and and eventually you know you you can you can adapt and find what you really like uh later down the line but um kind of tying into something i said earlier uh every experience is beneficial like you might learn a skill that you you think is is kind of useless you'll never use it again and then five years later you're doing something completely different and then it just pops up and you're really happy to have it so um i guess that's the best advice i can give For sure, it's very, very important. I think I like I agree with that. Any experience is better than no experience. Um, was it? I think Sean, you were next. Uh, yeah, I think so. Um, I, I think I, I think I can't say it any better than Adrian. Really. Um, obviously, uh, I didn't have a super pointed. Uh, trajectory in my career, uh, but I value all of the experiences I had. Um, and there, there was one, I'll just share one uh, thing that I thought was really neat that happens in other countries um, is they value what they call a gap year um, for students. And it, it's really just about exploring, like if you're not quite sure, uh, just getting out and exploring something that maybe isn't uh, formal education, but it's just getting maybe out of your hometown or out of your comfort zone and going to do some sort of work or volunteering or whatever. Um, so I, I wouldn't feel too too pressured if you're not 100% sure and all your career path is mapped out at this point. Um, it, it's a you always have opportunities to pivot. Um, and yeah, similar to what Adrian said, I think that's a good a good explanation. That's great. Thank you. Um, Spencer? 
Yeah, I totally agree with what Adrian and Sean said. Um, I think my addition would be, uh, you know, in my pathway, I went from uh, failing almost all of my classes in grade 10 and 11 uh, to being the top of my class in university. So it's never too late to make a change. Uh, it's never too late to find your gear and, and understand, you know, what speed you need to move at for yourself and, and understand what your pathway is. There's no goalpost that you should measure yourself against other than your past self. Um, and I think it's important to hold on to that. I think it's also important to um, understand that sustainability is actually a balance or a harmonization of all things. And I think that a lot there's a lot of passion in sustainability, which is something that you'll need to feel yourself forward uh, because it is still a challenging career path. You know, it's not a easy path forward in a lot of cases. You'll still have to build the the framework that you're that you're standing on. You have to build the uh, airplane while you're flying it in a lot of ways. Um, so I would say, you know, balance your passion for sustainability with your ability to make things work. You know, take your heart full of passion and your brain for for business and, and, and strategy and really put them together in a way that can, you know, put the gears into the machine that you want to build and put it forward. Because there is a lot of uh, challenge in trying to do something new, but there's a lot of reward as well. Uh, and there's nothing better than knowing that you made a uh, a real difference in somebody's life uh, and a real positive impact on the planet. You know, those are the ultimate goals. And, uh, you know, there's nothing, no better feeling than that. Definitely. I, I for sure agree with all your points, Spencer. Um, Jane? Yeah, I think it's important uh, if you were looking to get into a green career to do some sort of you know, post-secondary, if it's college, university, certificates, apprenticeships related to sustainability. Um, I think keeping it general is also good because um, if you get, sometimes if you get too specialized, that narrows the amount of jobs that um, you might be able to apply for. But I think also to really focusing on softer skills, like I was never a huge academic in university. Um, I got decent grades, but I wasn't, um, you know, much of an academic, I would say, but I was really focused on building those soft skills like communication, networking, leadership. Um, and those are the skills that really are going to get you hired when you get into that interview. And like we had talked about, it's so important to be able to collaborate as someone working in a sustainability role because you have to work with all the different departments and um, try to convince them, you know, what you're pitching is the best way forward, but also getting their buy-in and being inclusive. So those soft skills really come in handy and, you know, pretty much all the solutions we need to solve climate change are out there. We just need to have, you know, effective and inclusive implementation. And those are the soft skills that are really going to be able to push push that agenda forward. So I think, um, you know, keeping academics in mind, but also making sure you're working on those soft skills is so important. Uh, definitely. Like, there are just so many, like, for example, like networking, that's such a crucial, crucial skill to have, especially within such a, I guess, a smaller um, community of uh, people working in green jobs. Um, we're coming close to the end of our panel, and I just wanted to put it out there to see if anyone has any other questions, um, anything that they'd like to say before we thank our panelists and our participants. Um, if anyone has any questions, um, please feel free to send Gaia an email and we'll, if, if it's okay with our panelists, we'll forward it over to them if any students has any further questions afterwards. Um, but I think if not, I think it's safe to um and the panel um i just want to say thank you so much to our four panelists for coming and participating like all your grants are just so great and i'm sure it was really inspiring for all the students to hear and it was there's just so much variety um and it was it was very inspiring for me to listen to and i also want to say thank you to our students for taking time out of their summer today to come and listen to our panelists talk about their amazing and very inspiring jobs.